Hello everyone, I am Dr. Khalid Amin Khan and welcome to the Geophysical Software Engineering series. In this video, I will discuss shaded relief maps and how they are generated. We start with the grid, which is a two-dimensional spatial data comprising of regularly spaced nodes. So all these black points are the nodes and each node has an XY coordinate, which is its position such as latitude, longitudes, and a Z value, which is the parameter being mapped. And this parameter can be temperature, pressure, gravity, or elevation. The grid can be graphically represented in a number of different forms, such as contours, 3D wireframes, and surfaces, color maps, as well as shaded relief maps. So we would quickly see all these different graphical forms one by one. So these are the contours as, and as we can see, these are equipotential lines which show the trend of the anomaly or the graph geographic feature. Then these are wireframes which represent the features in a 3D. Here we can see the elevated parts as well as the depressions. And if we fill the grid with any color, so you would get a wireframe along with a rendered surface and if we remove the wireframe we would get a smooth surface so we can see it gives a good representation in 3d next we have the color maps here the z values have been converted into colors using a color spectrum this is a low resolution color map as the grid node spacing is larger we can generate higher resolution color maps by using grids with smaller grid node intervals. Finally, we have the shaded relief map of the same grid. Here the light source is placed at the upper left side. And here we can see this is a depression, which is indicated by this shadow and this highlighted part. Similarly, this is an elevated portion. Here we can see the brighter part towards the light source and this is a darker part. So in this way, this is a shaded relief map of a mono color and we can see it gives the impression of highlighting the topographic features. We can also generate shaded relief maps using color spectrums such as this one. So this gives a more appealing effect and we can see it gives us a depth perception as the topographic features such as elevated parts and depressions have been highlighted. So we go into more details of the shaded relief map. Basically these are generated from elevation grids such as the most commonly available shuttle radar topographic mission, most commonly called the SRTM grids. These maps give a 3D effect by casting brightness and shadows from a light source. Thus, mountains and valleys and all such undulations in the topography are highlighted, whereas flat areas appear more smooth on this shaded relief maps. The basic concept behind shaded relief maps is that the sides of the topographic features facing the light source appear brighter while the sides on the other side appear darker, giving a shadow effect. I have created a topographic model using a wrinkled paper and projected light at different angles from the top. So if the light source is at the top left side, these are the features that would be highlighted. If the light source is directly at the top of the structure, then we would have this type of imagery and if the light source is at the top right then we would have these features highlighted. If you focus on this part of this image you can see when the light source is at the top left the features oriented in this direction are highlighted with the shadows while if the light source is at the top right then in the same area we can see feature oriented in this direction is highlighted so in this way the shaded relief map 
is a good tool for structural interpretation of topographic data. Here we have the video of the same topographic model and we can see the light is moving from left to right at the top. We again focus in this area and I manually move the video so you can see when the light quickly moves from left to right how the features are changing. So this is a good representation to see the effects of light on the topographic features. Now we go into the computational details of shaded relief. An imaginary light source is placed at a point around the topographic feature. The angle between the light rays and the topographic surface is used to compute the brightness or darkness at a given point. In this case, light rays hit directly at the surface at 90 degrees and therefore give maximum brightness. But as the slope of the structure reduces, light would hit at an oblique angle and therefore brightness would be reduced. And as the structure becomes flat, we would get minimum brightness. And after that, the top of the structure would be on the other side and we would get darker and darker shadows. In this way, this increase in the angle can be used to model brightness and darkness. And this would be the key feature used in computation of shaded relief. Now we go into more mathematical details. There are two methods for the shaded relief. So the first one is the slope method. We consider three-dimensional space where x and y are the space axis that is the positions and z is the elevation and we suppose that z value is changing along the x-axis so therefore we consider two points x1 z1 and x2 z2 and we can calculate the slope between these two points by taking the differential dz by dx which is difference of z values divided by difference of the x values. We can calculate the angle theta by taking tan inverse of m and this angle theta is basically the dip. We can normalize the slope values into a digital value of 8 bits. This is similar to calculating the percentage and now our slope values would be in a range of 0 to 255 where 0 would indicate darkness and 255 would be brightness. So we call this digital value as a variable light that would be used in the computations. Next we have the Z difference method. Here we have the same two points but instead of computing the slope we directly take the Z values and normalize them and we get Z1n and Z2n and later we would take their difference. Within the grid, we have the Z minimum and Z maximum values and their difference would give us the range of Z values. And using this simple equation, we can get the normalized values, which would range from 0 to 255. And this Zn would be the variable light. We go into the more details the algorithm. So far we know that to compute shaded relief effect at a point Zp, we need an additional point Zr relative to which either the slope or the Z difference is computed. So we, first of all we normalize these two Z points and then we take their difference. So this del Zn would be the variable light. Now at the grid node we would have a color which may be a monocolor or variable color assigned through the color spectrum. This is called the grid node color represented by C and it is a 24-bit color. It can be split it into its three red, green, blue components, each of which is an 8-bit number. So we multiply this red, green, blue colors with del Zn to get the shaded leaf effect applied to it and so we get their R, L, G, L and B, L versions. 
Now this RGB were 8 bit numbers. Similarly, del Z was also an 8 bit number, but when we multiply them, their values exceed the 8 bit range. Now, in order to normalize them, we again multiply them with these terms. And after that, this RLGL and BL, that is the shaded relief applied versions, would be again converted back to their composite color which is the CL, else indicates that shaded relief effect has been applied. So this was the algorithm in which we can compute shaded relief at a single point. Now we would implement this algorithm to all the nodes of a grid. If ZP is the grid node at which shaded relief is to be computed, and let's suppose the light source is located at the top left position, we are draw a vector towards the light now the reference node for ZP would be its neighbor located at this vector. We now consider a grid of 5 into 5 nodes where the columns are represented by I ranging from 1 to M and rows by J ranging from 1 to 1. Then this is the node 1 1 and this is the node MN which in this case is node 5 5 and the light source is located here. Now, if this is ZP, then its reference node ZR would be this one. Here, ZP would be represented by IJ and ZR would be represented by I minus 1, J plus 1. Now, the loop for I would be ranging from 2 to M because at I minus 1 position, we need a reference node. Similarly, the loop for j would be ranging from 1 to n minus 1 because at j plus 1 position we need a reference node. So in this way, shaded relief would be computed only at the nodes enclosed by this green box, while the nodes outside this box on the left side and on the top side shaded relief would not be computed and here we would get an edge effect but this would be compensated by assigning these nodes the values of their nearest adjacent nodes inside the box. Similarly, if the light source is at the top right position then if this is ZP and this is ZR they would be represented by IJ for ZP and I plus 1, J plus 1 for ZR. And in this case, the loop for I would be ranging from 1 to M minus 1. And for J, it would be ranging from 1 to N minus 1. And shaded relief would be computed for these nodes within the screen box. Similarly, if the light source is located directly at the top, this is the ZP, then its reference node ZR would be located here and they would be represented by IJ for ZP and IJ plus 1 for ZR. And in this case, the loop for I would be 1 to M. It would be the complete loop because we don't need any reference node on its sides. While the loop for J would be the same 1 to N minus 1 and so all the nodes within the screen box would be where shaded relief would be computed. In this way, we compute the shaded relief for all the nodes and finally we get a shaded relief map. I hope this has given you some idea about the shaded relief maps and we hope to see you in the next video.